Hey friends, my name is Kratos. That's not my real name, it's just a little fake name I gave myself because I don't like talking about my real name, my real stuff on the internet. Uh, Kratos, you might be familiar with him as the God of War character uh, in the video games, which is probably my favorite video game, but uh, Kratos is in, in Greek mythology, actual Greek mythology, uh, not the video game mythology, uh, is the divine personification of strength and power. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, so, kind of looked like him. Looked like the old Kratos, the Norse Kratos, maybe. Uh, and uh, I love the video game, and I also love Greek mythology, and I love uh, that the personification of divine strength and power is Kratos in symbology and mythology. So, anyway, uh, some of you may know me from my, my BitChute channel. Some of you may, may know me from my Facebook page or my MeWe page. Um, you might remember that I swore off all forms of establishment social media a long time ago. And uh, I went through a pretty... Um, idealistic phase where I decided I wasn't going to uh, help the people make money who were actively trying to harm me. Uh, but the uh, sad truth of the matter is that uh, I, uh, I intend to start a market garden business here with the short time I have left, a little side hustle maybe, maybe more. Um, and the only way not the only way, but by far the most effective way uh, to reach people in my community with that endeavor was to create a new Facebook page. Uh, so I created a Facebook page called Chambala Gardens of Picayune. And it's very windy here, guys. I hope that's not too uh, distracting for you. I can hear myself talk, but I'm not sure what the microphone's picking up. Hopefully I don't have to scrap this whole video. But it's a very windy day here in South uh, southern, I guess you would just call it southern Mississippi. Um, out here at the Apocalypse Homestead, this uh, land that I call Eru, it's ten and a half acres. Um, Eru, like I said, I love mythology. Eru is the um, one of the one of the realms of the Egyptian afterlife. It's basically their version of paradise. You, uh, you basically have to go through all kinds of trials and tribulations and they're, and they're hellacious. So you kind of have to go through hell to get to heaven in Egyptian mythology. Uh, so I, I really like that, um, that symbolism as well. So that's why I went with Arrow because we have gone through hell to be here. And we're going to go through hell while we're here too. Um, and that's what I'm here to talk to you about. Um, the, uh, I'm going to make a series of videos and a playlist on the YouTube channel showing you uh, how and why and where so where we are and how and why we got there and then uh, the uh, the how and the why and the what we're doing now that we're here so I chose to come out here into the woods to talk to you initially because it's a very peaceful place um, I have about out of my 10.5 acres, I have about one and a half to two and a half acres, I don't really know, uh, of usable homestead land. And originally we were looking for about two to three acres to homestead on, but when we saw this, this property for sale, it's, we really, really couldn't pass it up because it had about that much land that was usable. usable. And then all of this back here, which is basically, uh, um, you know, forest, deep, heavy forest that's uh, almost almost a swamp so you're looking at my creek here and over here is uh, the guy who owned it prior to us used an excavator to build a small pond that the creek runs in and out of and when it rains uh, when we get a lot of rain which we're gonna get this weekend um, or actually tomorrow uh, today's Thursday so Friday uh, we're gonna get some rain actually we're supposed to get the rain today it's uh, Friday tomorrow will be fine but really tonight we're gonna get some pretty heavy storms and all of this will probably flood. Um, it won't flood enough to affect anywhere close to where I'm, where my homestead is, uh, but I won't be able to come back here for a few days probably without my river boots on at least. Uh, but this is what we wanted because it's, you know, around two acres of homestead with a giant, you know, 
eight, seven, eight and a half acre buffer between us and everybody else. And all of this land back here, like our, my property ends at this creek here. And, and then, you know, somebody does own this land back here, but there's nothing there for hundreds of acres and tens of acres that way, there's nothing. And, uh, and uh, there's several hundred feet going that way to the, to the main road uh, that we live on the corner of. So um, we have a nice buffer zone between us and everyone else. <clears throat> and there's deer back here. I know that hog will eventually move through here. There's supposed to be fish in this creek. I haven't fished it yet, just been really busy. But it's just a really perfect land. So why am I here? Why am I not at home watching Netflix? Uh, you know, just living the American dream because uh, back in 2007, when the, uh, when the last real bad economic crash happened, uh, those of you who paid attention know that we almost went out for good. We almost went under forever. Uh, or we, went into, we almost went into a very deep financial collapse. And, uh, and that, 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 um, that crisis never really ended. They just, like, you know how those, you know those helicopters that dump flame retardant on the fire? Well, if, consider, like, if, the, if that economic crisis was a, was a, um, a raging wildfire, uh, the helicopters were dumping gasoline on it. That's what they did to it. Uh, so here we are. And the economy was going to collapse again at some point anyway, uh, but the whole COVID uh, scamdemic made that a virtual certainty uh, in the immediate time. I mean, where it, I spent a long time thinking that it was going to happen, in, you know, imminently after 2008, uh, and then I kind of I kind of went back to sleep on it because it just didn't seem like it was ever going to happen. Uh, but we know very very. Uh, factually that we are in the midst of that collapse right now and all of the alarms are going off uh, but back in 2007 and 2008 um, and guy that runs the American Homestead uh, YouTube channel you might be familiar with him he made a video recently uh, where he, he put it perfectly if you take prepping to its logical conclusion you become a homesteader because um, you know when you when you start talking about preparing for a financial collapse, a lot of people that they'll start storing food and storing essentials, and uh, and stocking up. Um, but all of that is very finite, and if you get into a, a protracted, prolonged crisis like we're about to go into, like we're in the midst of, uh, those things are going to run out sooner or later, and then you're fucked. Uh, so, so if you take it to the logical conclusion, you must become a homesteader, and you must produce those things yourself as much as possible. So the um, people ask me, what, what, what do I do? Um, and basically what I, what I tell them to do in the most fundamental way is to make a list of all the things that you need to survive um, and, and prioritize those things. So, you know, it's water first, food second, shelter third, then maybe power. And then maybe you're going into like, you know, things like toothpaste and toilet paper and all those sorts of things. Make a list of all the things that you need, and in a, in, a, in, a, in a prioritized list, decide the things that you have no control over, which is, for most people, literally everything, um, and then endeavor to, to take control of those things. That's what prepping comes down to at a homesteading uh, type uh, scenario. scenario. So, you know, so the basic, you know, you ask the basic person where our food comes from and they'll say the grocery store. And, uh, and those of you who have been to the grocery store know that that's just not true. If it ever was true, it's certainly not true anymore. Uh, because the shelves get a little bit emptier every week. And it gets a little bit harder to find the things you need every week. You might find it, you might not. And, uh, and that's not something that's temporary and it's not something that's going to go away anytime soon if it ever does, guys. And that's part of the agenda. I don't have time to talk about all that right now, but when you hear stuff like Build Back Better and The Great Reset, these are all euphemisms and metaphors for destroying society so they can build it back in their image because they own everything and now they, just, and now they, they own enough of it that they don't have to worry about things like the market and profit and uh, you know they've got all the money they can ever need, they've got all the property that they could ever need and now they decided that they don't really need us around anymore. 
and they're just gonna rebuild the whole thing. If you've ever read about Agenda 21, it's the same thing. It's them just basically uh, imploding human civilization and, uh, and building it back the way they wanted it, which is very limited and very small and very isolated um, and uh, very centralized. Centraliz centra centralization is the key there. So when I started learning that sort of thing, and this is nothing, this is not something that I just learned, like the Great Reset uh, and the Fourth Industrial Revolution and Build Back Better, this is all brand new terms to us, but Agenda 21 is very old. It's, it was signed, uh, it was uh, agreed upon by George H.W. Bush in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil uh, in 1993. And I was just a year out of uh, high school when that happened. And, uh, and they've been implementing that ever since. It wasn't just a, a concept they agreed upon. They, they, took, they took action. And you never heard it, uh, you never heard it uh, labeled as Agenda 21. It was all things like sustainable development and things like that. And that's why there's so, so many ridiculous building codes in your county maybe, or uh, you know uh, restrictions, all those restrictions that, and all the ridiculous things you have to, the, the ridiculous hoops you have to jump through to do things that you want on your own property. And they say it's all for it's all for environmental issues. That's all Agenda 21. So it's nothing new. Um, but the more I learned about it, the more I learned about economics, the more I knew that uh, that this 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 um, this collapse that we're going through right now, I, I knew that was inevitable. So um, and I knew that, and I learned. I figured out at a very early stage of prepping that that really bugging out is. Uh, you know, for a long-term collapse, bugging out is, is not practical. And just prepping by storing food is not practical. You know, how many, years can you how many years can you really store up? How many years worth of product can you really store up? That's practical. That won't go bad. And, um, uh, you know, and, and this could be... I mean, the Great Depression lasted an entire generation, guys. It was 17 years long. And, uh, you know, and this... I have a feeling it's going to make the Great Depression look like a trip to Disneyland and, and the lights are all flashing red and even mainstream economists who laughed at the economists, at the fringe economists who said 2007 was about to go down, you know, they said the housing market's going to collapse and they all got laughed at on television and then it happened. And of course those same economists are saying that something terrible is about to happen, but, the, but now the economists that laughed at those economists are saying something terrible is about to happen. So we need to take that very seriously and that's why I'm here. Uh, we bought a, ho a homestead, a different homestead in 2012. It was uh, two acres and we did really well on that homestead. We raised chickens successfully. Uh, we raised rabbits. We had a pretty successful garden, pretty successful fruit trees, um, pretty successful composting system. You know, pretty successful, successful small scale homestead. But I was still very much on the grid. I didn't have a water source. And, uh, and, the, and the most important thing was when, when this, when this uh, crisis came into being uh, was that we, don't, we didn't own the home, it was mortgaged. And we still had something like 17 years left on our mortgage. So if we had stayed there and the, and the economy collapsed, uh, the banks aren't gonna care. They're gonna come at you and say, fuck you, pay me. And then the government who caused the collapse is gonna be standing behind them with a club saying, yeah, fuck, the, fuck you, pay them. Uh, and then they're going to take your house. And, and to me, uh, you know, these, and according to Agenda 21, these very rural areas that we live in, that I live in, um, are no-go areas. If you look at the sustainable development map for the United States, there's hardly any green areas. And those green areas are the mega smart cities. Um, and, then and then everything else is either red or yellow. And they're very limited or completely restricted hum human um, habitation. And that's where I live. I live in the red area or yellow area. And, I, and it occurred to me that perhaps the way that, one way that they were going to get people out of those zones was to collapse the, to collapse the economy, take their property, and then just let it, and, and just let it go to rot, return to nature. Um, so we knew that that was a very, that it was a very high possibility that we were going to lose our home. We had, a, we had a certain amount of equity into it. And, uh, and uh, according to the time back in 2020, uh, mid to late 2020, we were on the verge of another housing collapse. There was a big, big housing boom at the moment, and we were on the verge of a collapse. So we said, let's sell it, let's get out of it. 
and, uh, and we'll buy raw land and we'll build from the ground up debt free. So that's why we're here. Uh, we're on 10 and a half acres. And as I will show you in subsequent videos, uh, we have built, we haven't built our home yet. We live in a, in a 27 foot RV trailer, uh, which is, you know, sufficient for now to, uh, to live in. It's not awesome. And quite frankly, we're kind of getting tired of being, uh, you know, so living so tiny. Uh, there's, if it was just our wife and I, it would probably be okay, better. Uh, but we also have two dogs that live with us and uh, we can't put them outside. They're just indoor dogs. And, uh, but as I will show you, we have a very large uh, 3,200 square foot garden. We have a, uh, a really substantial rabbit breeding operation that's going well. Uh, as a matter of fact, in a couple of weeks, I'm gonna um, harvest a handful. I'm gonna harvest a, uh, a brood of rabbits. I don't know if you'd call them a brood or a kit or whatever you call them. Uh, but you know, we had um, a doe gave birth about three months ago and they're almost ready to harvest. And then I, we just recently got a quail, a meat quail operation up and running. And we have uh, eight laying hens and a rooster uh, for eggs. Uh, so, on, so on top of, so that's our food production system. We have this creek here that'll give us water in an off-grid situation. Uh, we're also fortunate enough uh, that about a tenth of a mile away there is an old artesian well that used to be uh, part of a, a school that got destroyed during Hurricane Camille. Um, but the artesian well still remains and that well will run off grid practically till the end of time basically. So if we ever really need fresh water, we can just uh, run over there, grab it and bring it back here. Uh, you know, take showers, wash dishes, that sort of thing. But we also have this uh, really good window. I hope that's not too bad for you guys. But we also have this creek here, uh, which we can, uh, we can treat the water and drink it if we need to. Um, and uh, so as far as food and water and land and shelter is concerned, we have an off-grid, uh, we're, we're off-grid. We're, uh, you know, uh, technically we're off-grid. Functionally, we're off-grid. So as we, we really want to get ourselves a, a really functional home that, that will last for, for, for decades. Uh, and then at that point, we'll move forward with um, things like off-grid power, um, getting our well hooked up to uh, solar so that you know we don't have to expose ourselves in a, in a survival situation going to the artesian well or whatever. And we don't have to treat this water. You know, um, we can just get water from our well with our solar system, that sort of thing. Um, you know, just uh, so that's our priority. Uh, our priority was to get the food set up, um, we have the water set up, we have shelter, and then. Next, we'll move forward uh, with a more permanent shelter and then power. And then if, time, if, if we even have time to do that and, we, and time you know, continues on from there, we'll uh, move to other priorities like uh, things like how to make toilet paper naturally or how to make toothpaste on property, that sort of thing. How to, you know, just things like that, how to survive off grid. You're gonna need these skills. It sounds radical, guys. Uh, but we're, and we've never seen anything like this in our lifetimes, almost all of us. So it seems absolutely absurd, absolutely crazy. But if you take an objective observation of, of what is actually happening and what they're saying they're going to do, and they being the people who control the world, they being the people who control the money, who control the financial systems, if you listen to what they're actually saying and they have the power and the influence to do this and they're going to do it, they're doing it then the only logical conclusion is to adapt and overcome to it now while you have the opportunity there's very little time left i'm not even sure if i have time you know we might be living in that rv forever somehow uh but uh so this is what we've done this is why we're here and in the, like i said in subsequent videos i'll tell you exactly what i've done uh to um and what we're doing to um increase our food security and our food independence. And that includes not only growing vegetables and, and growing meat rabbits and, and meat quail and, and chickens for eggs, but when we got, now we gotta figure out how to feed those animals off the grid because uh, very soon you might have noticed, um, you know, grains are in short supply and farmers are having a hard time getting implements and, uh, you know, additives for their, you know, uh, fertilizer and all the things that they need to grow their food. 
So how am I going to feed my chickens? How am I going to feed my rabbits? How do I feed my quail off grid? Things you got to consider. These are things I'll be talking about in subsequent videos. So I'm going to make a playlist. Um, it'll just be two or three videos uh, on that. And then in the future, you know, I'll, I'll do garden updates. I'll do rabbit updates. Maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll butcher a rabbit on video to show you how. Butcher a quail on, on, on video to show you how. Um, and to show you that, um, well, I'll get to, to that in the future. So I don't want to go on for too long. But once again, welcome to Eru. Welcome to my new YouTube page. And thank you for... Uh, thank you for watching and I hope you will click the subscribe button and give this video a like and feel free to leave a comment below uh, I'd like to have a discussion going it's that's one thing about BitChute is you can't have really have a discussion I mean people can leave comments, but I don't get notifications about them There could be hundreds of comments on my videos that I haven't responded to because I don't know that the comment I don't get notifications on it uh, so one of those things that they need to work on uh, prob and probably a huge reason why not a lot of people use it. Uh, but I'll also put the video, um, I'll put the link to my BitChute channel and I'll put my link to my Building the Apocalypse Homestead series where uh, I kind of did a step-by-step um, -step, uh, kind of time-lapse. Uh, you know, if you watch every video, you'll see what this place looked like as raw, as raw land. There's nothing on it at all except trees when I bought it. Now there's a functioning homestead, so you know the the process that we went through to get from there to here uh, is in that building the apocalypse homestead video uh, playlist, and uh, it's pretty cool. I'm pretty proud of it. It was a titanic amount of work. And by the way, guys, if you're thinking about doing this sort of thing and uh, you're worried about the daunt, how daunting the the uh, the task is, it is. It's daunting, and it's especially daunting uh, for someone like me. I did this by myself. Uh, and the only machinery I had was a chainsaw. Uh, everything that I, everything that you're gonna see, um, I built everything from almost everything from reclaimed uh, and reused like lumber for my rabbit shed is all it's all lumber I got from from other places used and repurposed. Um, the, the beds for my garden, uh, I use raised beds. I cut down trees and move them all. Uh, it's really a titanic amount of work, but I did it in 11 months. And I did it by myself. So if you can, if you have some people helping you, if you have some machinery, a skid steer, a track hoe, anything like that, a tractor, you can do a lot more quicker. And if you, uh, if you act urgently and radically, you can, you can do it. And you might want to get started on it because if you don't know how to grow food and you don't have, know how to raise animals, uh, then you're going to fail. You're going to fail early and you're going to fail often. And I've been doing this for uh, 11 years now, and I'm just now starting to get to the point where I feel like I, I know enough to call myself, uh, I don't want to say an authority on, the, on it, but I, I, I can talk about it without, without feeling like I might be blowing smoke up your ass. You know what I mean? I kind of know what I'm doing, a little bit. Uh, it's, it's, it's a never-ending process of learning, so don't get me wrong, I don't know everything. And it's impossible to know everything because nature is always evolving, nature is always changing. Nature's always throwing you curveballs, uh, but um, you know you don't just put seeds in the ground and expect the garden. And uh, there's, and there's there's just there's just so much knowledge that you need to have, and so much experience that you really need. Knowledge is one thing, but uh, the uh, the experience is the most important part. So uh, it is February now. Uh, for most of us, it is the perfect time to start preparing a garden. And I'll get to those videos as soon as humanly possible, so you can have at least one source of information on how to do that. And thank you for watching. I love you guys. I'll talk to you soon.